I personally met someone here in Mexico who's now serving a five-year prison sentence for doing something that you might not even realize is illegal. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the story about what exactly happened to her, as well as some other things you should not do to avoid getting in serious trouble when coming to Mexico. The first thing you should not do is drive your foreign plated car outside of the free zone in Mexico without getting a temporary import permit. Because if you do, your car can be confiscated and to get your car out of impound, the fines are often more than the value of your entire car. So because of this, it's very, very important that you know where the free zones are in Mexico. And that is the entire Baja Peninsula, part of the state of Sonora, so basically west of Highway 15 and north of Wymus. And in addition to those two places, within 25 kilometers of the border and the entire state of Quintana Roo. However, since Quintana Roo is on the other side of the country, you literally have to drive through the whole country to get your car there. So even if your end destination is Quintana Roo and you're coming from the US or Canada, you still need to get that temporary import permit to be able to drive across the country safely. The next thing you should not do in Mexico is drive without a good insurance policy because car crashes work different here. If there's a car crash where someone is seriously injured or killed, well then all of the drivers involved in that crash are probably going to be taken to jail until it's determined who's at fault and there's uh, settlement talks that are discussed and agreed upon that the at-fault parties will be paying to the non-at-fault injured parties. And if you have a good insurance policy with good liability coverage, well then that insurance company is going to be providing the legal support you need, they're going to be posting your bail so you get out of jail quickly, and they're also going to be paying that agreed upon settlement to the injured party so you're not responsible for that out of pocket. And if you don't have a good insurance policy, you're going to be responsible for finding and hiring a lawyer, you're going to be responsible for paying your own bail, and you're going to have to pay out of pocket for the agreed upon settlement to the injured parties or the family of the injured parties. And if you don't have the money for this, well then you could be in jail for a very, very long time. And something else to be extremely careful about is relying on the insurance policy provided by your US credit card. Because there are a lot of credit card companies that provide rental car insurance. However, I've never seen one of these that provides liability insurance. Yes, a lot of them provide car rental insurance, but the ones I've seen, they only cover the value of the car or like injuries to the people inside your own car, not third party liability protection. So make sure you have that third party liability protection if you're driving to Mexico. And if you're driving your own car here, well, I've used a company called GNP Seguros for my insurance. And for a car valued at less than $20,000, this insurance was between like $450 and $550 per year. The next thing you should not do when coming to Mexico is overstay your visa. When you come to Mexico as a foreigner, you're going to get something called an FMM. It's this little tourist card that has your information on it, as well as a number that states how long you're allowed to stay in the country. And that number can be as high as 180 days. But if it's like, let's say for example, only 20 days, well then you have to leave the country within 20 days. However, it's not always 180 days, it could be like seven days or 20 days and just be sure to look at the number they write on the card so you know how long you're allowed to stay in the country. But if you're flying in, this is going to be included in the price of your plane ticket and you're going to get it after you land in Mexico when you go through immigration there. But if you're driving in, it is your responsibility to stop at the border and pick up one of these. You're going to have to pay for it. It's about 30 US dollars. Now, in all honesty, most people who overstay their visa, nothing bad ever happens to them. Because if you have an expired FMM and you drive across the border back into the United States, you're good to go. Or if you have an expired FMM and you're flying out, well then the day you're flying out, you just go to the INM office or the immigration office at the airport, you pay about $30 for a new one, and then you're good to get a flight out of there. The problem comes if you get stopped by immigration before you're leaving the country. 
because immigration likes to set up checkpoints, especially in tourist areas like in the Riviera Maya, the Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Tulum area. They'll set up checkpoints, they'll check everyone's papers, and if yours are expired, well then you're being taken to a facility which people describe as a jail or a prison. It is not good conditions, and people have been reported to be in there for as long as a year. So this is definitely not a situation you want to get yourself in. The next thing you should not do when coming to Mexico as a foreigner is getting involved in politics or political affairs in this country because if you do, you can literally be removed from the country for doing so. I should say that I'm sure this has happened, but I've never personally heard of a single instance of this. If you have, let me know in the comments below. The next thing I would strongly advise when coming to Mexico is don't get involved in Mexico's most dangerous jobs. And I would say the two most dangerous jobs in Mexico are becoming a politician and number two, doing anything related to the drug trade. If you get involved in either one of these things, well then your chance of getting killed or something seriously bad happens to you probably increases a hundredfold, maybe a thousandfold. Like coming to Mexico as a tourist versus coming to Mexico as someone who's trying to run for office or like decides to like start distributing your own uh, goods, well then you're probably gonna find yourself in a lot of trouble. And maybe I should add a third really dangerous job in Mexico, and that is being a journalist who's reporting on the drug trade. The next thing you should not do when coming to Mexico is exceed the duty-free limit, especially for alcohol or cigarettes or tobacco products for that matter. But where I've heard of a lot of people getting in trouble is them exceeding the duty-free limit for cigarettes because maybe they're coming to Mexico for two weeks and they smoke two packs a day, so they're bringing 28 packs. Well, the duty-free limit is 10 packs of cigarettes. And if you exceed the limit, well then they're going to hit you with massive fines. I got a comment on this channel once of someone saying this happened to them and they were forced to pay like 1500 US dollars as a fine when entering the Cancun airport with their cigarettes. Then previously we mentioned this in a video we made on scams. I'll link that video on scams right up here. And a whole bunch of people in the comments of that video said the same thing happened to them with cigarettes. They had to pay massive fines because they exceeded the duty free limit. When it comes to bringing most things into Mexico, if you're over the duty-free limit and you declare that you're over the duty-free limit, well then you pay a 16% tax on whatever it is that you're over. However, if you don't declare it and they catch you, well then you pay a 116% tax. So like if you're bringing in a thousand dollar computer that's over the duty-free limit, well then if you declare it, you're paying a $160 tax, and if you don't declare it, you're paying a $1,160 tax on top of the $1,000 you already paid for the computer. And I'm using the example as a computer because I have a personal very bad experience with this. I was coming into Mexico, I was flying into Cancun with two computers, and I knew I was over the duty-free limit because you're only allowed one computer. I had an old computer that didn't work at all, and I had a new $1,500 MacBook that I had been using for about a week. And according to customs, I'm supposed to get one computer for free, that would be the new MacBook, and then I would pay duties on that old computer. But I went through customs, I went to the declare something line, and because I went to the declare something line, they searched all of my stuff, which pissed me off because I'm being honest and I'm going to the declare line, and then you're going to search all my stuff as if I'm trying to smuggle something in, and it got worse from there because I'm supposed to get my new MacBook in the country for free because that's my duty-free exception, and then I would pay taxes on the cheap, broken laptop. Well, no. They're like, you have to pay taxes on the new one, which is not the case. They screwed me at the Cancun airport. I would just recommend not declaring anything, but I'm not saying to break the law. I'm saying to not be over the duty-free limit for anything. That's my advice. Before I tell you that story about what landed that girl I know in prison, I wanted to say one more thing, and that is 
don't be afraid to go to Mexico. I realize that watching a video like this can sound kind of scary, but knowledge is power and knowing the things that I'm talking about in this video is going to help you out a lot. So watch this video, watch a few other videos, and you're going to be a lot more well prepared for coming to Mexico. The next thing you should not do is bring guns or ammunition into the country of Mexico, whether you're flying or driving. There's a common myth, like if you go into Mexico expats Facebook groups and you ask about getting a gun in Mexico, you'll get hundreds of comments saying guns are illegal here. Well, no they're not, that's a myth, but they are very strict about them. So this woman I met a few years back in Mexico I found out about a year ago that she's currently serving a prison sentence in a Mexican prison because she was riding in a car and that car got stopped at a checkpoint. They searched the car and they found an illegal gun. It wasn't even hers, but she got five years in a Mexican prison. Now, if you want to own a gun in Mexico, don't come to someone like me trying to figure out how to do it legally get professional advice from someone who really, really knows what they're doing. You can own guns here, but there are specific steps you need to take to make sure it's in the country legally. 